Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Thursday, 3 o'clock, it's time for another edition of Condo Insider, a Hawaii show about association living, pretty much designed to educate board members and homeowners alike. And the purpose of the show today is called Meetings, 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 or the three R's, the rules, regulations, and risk within a meeting. Although I like to personally call meetings the practical, the practical alternative to doing real work. I know when I'm working in the company, they schedule meetings after meeting after meeting, and then I have no time to do the work I'm supposed to do. So uh, I call it the practical alternative to doing real work. And I brought with me my lovely friend forever, Nalan, attorney, and who's gonna talk about the various types of meetings of associations, and I want everybody again to know where you are now, because you switched firms maybe six months ago or so, and uh, tell us where you are, and again, but what you do, kind of your background. Aloha, uh, my name is Nalan. I'm attorney with the law firm Damon Keelion, Kupchak Hastert. Uh, we provide uh, food services, uh, legal services to our community in Hawaii, including condominium community association representation. I also practice immigration law. I'm from China, I was born and raised there, so speak Mandarin. I also help a lot of matter speaking clients on their transactional and litigation matters. Uh, such a pleasure to be back again. And you do some immigration work too. Yes. Do you enjoy that? I do. I think I deeply feel that's an area there where I'm touching people's life, uh, making such a big difference. I would imagine that in today's world there's been a lot of changes in the law and the philosophy and the rules and regulations with all the stuff going on all over the uh, borders across our country. Is that true? Yes, uh, it's a very hot debated area with all the new administration bringing all these new policies, extreme wedding, buy America, high America, uh, not only for, you know, family-based immigrant, uh, immigrants, but also for employment-based, investment-based, across the board, asylum, all areas of immigrants, they are facing definitely challenges in this new political climate. Well, thank you for all you're doing. I think, you know, taking care of the I don't want to call them the little people, that sounds demeaning, but the, you know, the ordinary Joe on the street or, or Jane on the street or Joe and Jane's children on the street, make sure I'm politically correct, cover everybody, but uh, it's a tough job, but you know, we're certainly on new ground in some ways. I think that uh, this area is an area that's kind of had fallen into uh, a routine and needs to be looked at again to kind of correct the laws and make it clear what the requirements are, because it's been pretty much, there are laws, but they've been pretty much ignored in some respects in the certain areas, and, and I know it's a tough job, but thank you for doing it anyway. My pleasure, I mean, I really hope, join the other people who's been working towards this great goal, you know. Might be a fun to do a show on that one, one, one day. Yeah, you know, I'll you know, consider about that. I think it'd be interesting. <laughs> but anyway, we know condo associations particularly have meetings. Mm -hmm. And basically the kind of meetings we're gonna to govern today are you have the annual meeting, you have a special meeting of the members, which would be like an annual meeting of the members. Mm -hmm. Then you can have a regular board meeting, a special board meeting, an executive session, something called a written consent, and then kind of thrown in there somewhere are committee meetings. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to kind of go through the general legal requirements and concept of each of them. And let's begin with the annual meeting. Why do we have annual meetings and why do they have to have annual meetings? Well, annual meeting, annual meeting. So at least once a year. I mean, this is uh, just, you know, for example, some very important things for the association to do. You know, like for example, you approve uh, last year's uh, annual meeting minutes and make sure any, uh, you know, excess funds from the association collected will be rolled over uh, to next year's maintenance fee expenses so that you don't, uh, you know, uh, you know, affect your uh, nonprofit organization tax data. Uh, you know, something, other things like uh, you want to, um, you know, like, a, for example, you have any uh, changes uh, to your, um, you know, association documents. Uh, this is an area for owners to vote on it. Uh, adopting important um, resolutions or policies that requires ownership approval. Uh, you know, of course, uh, you know, completing last year's certain business like uh, changing managing agents or, you know, appointing an auditor, things like that, just to keep the operation going for the association. And probably the number one thing is elect directors. 
Yeah, right. for that very important. Like yeah. when the terms are up, you want to have a new batch of officers and directors. So one of the things that I've seen before is I'll go to an annual meeting and an owner will be hoo-hoo about something. He'll say, I want to make a motion. And mm -hmm. he's in new business at the appropriate time in the, in, the, uh, in the meeting. He says, I want to make a motion that the board of directors immediately reduce the maintenance fees by 10%. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that a lawful or correct motion? That's probably invalid because you, you are kind of interfering with uh, an area or a function that, that is within the board's so discretion to exercise on. Uh, you know, the chair of the meeting may consider not to entertain this motion because it's lacking legal basis. Yeah, I think the most things I've been told is that your governing documents provide certain authority to the board. Mm -hmm. And so if, in fact, you're trying to tell the board to do something within its own authority, right. that, in fact, then you're violating the bylaws because the bylaw gives the board majority the discretion to make those decisions. And so you can't make any motion, but you can make what we call an advisory motion, which would be something in a sense that uh, I'd like to make a motion that the board reconsider the annual budget and take a closer look at it to see if there's anything we can do to reduce the maintenance fees by 10%, mm -hmm. where it's advising that they want the board to know that the owners are concerned about something. Mm -hmm. They're not instructing them specifically to do something like mandating a reduction of 10%. We're making a motion on an advisory basis of the board that we as the more owner majority are concerned about this. We'd ask you within your discretion of the bylaws to look at this again would be a proper motion. Yes, exactly. And of course, uh, if you get enough uh, ownership approval, you can do a special petition on certain important things like uh, amending your project documents or limiting the board's powers, uh, you know, or removing certain board directors. Definitely, if you get a 25% of ownership approval, you can do it uh, via a special vehicle. Yeah. yeah. And so when you go to the meeting, mm -hmm. they usually publish an agenda, which we call technically the order of business. Mm -hmm. Where does that come from? Uh, I would say, you know, like uh, the Roberts Roof order, but uh, most important thing, you should first look at your bylaws. Uh, you know, if there's something that's not provided in your bylaws, then you can always go to Roberts Rules. Uh, Robert, yeah. In most associations I've seen, the bylaws say this is the order of business. And why I bring this up, because parallel to the thing that I was saying a moment ago, is that so you have an order of business that will say notice of meeting, reports, new business, old business, election, whatever it may be. Yeah. So someone will go, the meeting will be called to order, and someone will immediately say, I want to make a motion to advise the board we want to have you look at the budget again. Well, the proper thing would be mm -hmm. it's out of order because the bylaws provides the order of business. The appropriate time will be in new business to bring up that motion. Yes. You just, it's not the wild, wild west. The order of business defines by the bylaws what you will discuss in what specific order. And so a person who's all hoo-hoo and huffing and puffing and wants to get right to the bottom line mm -hmm. and, and make a motion may be told he has to wait. Yes, and uh, the number one thing for any meeting to conduct official business, you have to make sure you have a quorum. If without a quorum, you can't do any business, basically. And that's an interesting point, because I've seen this argument. We, could, we scheduled the annual meeting, mm -hmm. and we didn't have a quorum. So we've had our annual meeting this year, we just didn't have a meeting because we had no quorum, and now we'll just wait till next year to hold a meeting, and we won't elect directors. Everybody will just stay where they are and stay in place. And uh, what's your first reaction to that? I think any general counsel for that association would definitely <laughs> advise against that because that's literally a violation of the law already. Yeah, it has some really hidden consequences to it. First of all. To answer the question, no, you, you've got to take efforts to uh, adjourn a meeting to a future date or to do something to hold that meeting. Mm -hmm. It's not just electing directors and, uh, you know, because it affects the terms and, and could affect, in theory, uh, some of the legality of the board and what they do. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, I want you to think about this, that, and I had a CPA on the show, that what about the tax resolution? If you don't pass that tax resolution in a, in a lawful meeting, 
you now no longer have that defense of why you don't pay taxes on the excess gain of, uh, of money you didn't spend that year mm -hmm. by taking a position and we rolled it over without passing it. So holding the meeting is kind of a critical thing and mm -hmm. just because you don't want to stand up to the owners and explain what you've done and why or you don't want to have an election because you don't want the board to change mm -hmm. is not in the spirit of the, of the, of the governing documents and the bylaws and, and you have to hold an annual meeting. Yes. Pretty much true? Yes. So let's see what else I have. Uh, let's see. Um, fix my earphone here. How about the form? Is that a part of the annual meeting? The form? What form? Form. Like oh, owner's form. right. Yes, yes. That's usually uh, a good area for uh, you know give owners about opportunity to talk about the issues they are concerned about. Yeah. Yeah. Forms are, technically are not an official part of the annual meeting because it's not in the order of business. Mm -hmm. However, it's strongly recommended you have a form either before or after the annual meeting, and there's debate on which is better. Mm -hmm. To me, the answer is straightforward. If you have issues of contention. You're probably better off having the forum so people aren't interfered with or have false understandings by fake news mm -hmm. what the real issues are. Yeah. That you're better off if you have contentious issues to do the forum. Of, you know, basically, you call the meeting to order and say if there's no objection, we're going to we're going to adjourn to a 30-minute forum to discuss the painting project, whatever the issue of contention is, and then call the meeting back to order. 30 minutes is not enough. You can also you can call the meeting back to order and see if there's no objection. We're going to extend the forum for another 15 minutes. There's ways to, in a parliamentary way, deal with that. But if it's just basically, well, we want to hear from you. You took the time out of your day mm -hmm. to come to the meeting. We finished the official business. More times than not, it's done after the meeting. But it's not in the minutes and it's not a part of the official meeting. But indirectly, it's a part of the annual meeting because you want to have that relationship with your owners that they can talk about things that may be important to them. Yes, and also I think the most effective way actually to prevent disputes or reduce disputes between, you know, owners is to improve your communication, you know, between the board and the uh, association owners. And think about it, people, you know, uh, manage to take the time to attend the meeting, such a precious opportunity for you to have people together to have a meaningful discussion about the association issues. So you should really make full use of that opportunity. Well, the annual meeting is a very important part of the condominium process. It's certainly you want to have the minutes and the record because of that. So we're going to take a break in one minute, but I want to ask you one quick question. Mm -hmm. Special meeting, what's the difference? The special meeting usually is called for a specific purpose, so you need to just give an notice and hold the meeting just for that special purpose, uh, usually for some important right. issues. Yeah. So special meetings are member meetings, but it's limited to the notice of the meeting, which you can, which you can discuss, although I'd point out a removal of directors can be done without notice at an annual or a special meeting. And on that note, we're going to take a short break. Boy, we've, this time went really quickly in talking about meetings, but we'll be right back in one minute. When I was growing up, I was among the one in six American kids who struggle with hunger. But with the power of breakfast, the kids in your neighborhood can think big and be more. Go to hungeris.org to make breakfast happen for kids in your neighborhood. I was so young to understand what it means. I could wait till I could be 17. One in three teens who smoke will lose years of these moments. It's your life. Don't miss a thing. Hey, hey, baby, that's you. I want to know, will you watch my show? I hope you do. It's on Tuesdays at 1 o'clock, and it's out of the comfort zone, and I'll be your host, R.B. Kelly. See you there. Well, that prior person on the commercial, R.B. Kelly, has his bodies in motion thing, so I'm here trying to add that to my show. Anyway, we're talking with Nalan about meetings, 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 rules, regulations, and risks. And we talked about annual meetings and special meetings. And now we're going to talk about the basic business of the association, 
board meetings, and there's regular board meetings and special board meetings. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about regular board meetings, which is really the meat and potato of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So what is it, and what is a regular board meeting? A regular board meeting would be all the board directors, you know, uh, it's an opportunity for them to regularly meet to conduct a business that's within their authority to do for the association operation, stuff like that, and owners has a right to participate except of the executive session. And sometimes I see boards uh, do a lot of things offline by email and, and vote by email and not do it at a regular meeting. Is that a good idea? Uh, generally not a good idea, but sometimes it's, it's sort of necessary when you have urgent issues. I would recommend I, my clients for whatever they discussed over the email, vote by email. They have to do a ratification officially at the next uh, you know, regular board meeting to sort of endorse that prior decision. And if you look under parliamentary procedure, just a little footnote to that, if let's just say you voted to spend $10,000 to do something by email vote, and then you went ahead and signed the contract, and then you go to the regular meeting and, and you say, we want to ratify our earlier decision. A person who originally said yes could say no, and you could be up the creek. Yeah, you know, that's Business could be has to be done in a regular meeting. Yeah. And so I can understand that we had a situation where there was a gas leak, and we had to shut the gas off, make an emergency repair because the building had no gas for their kitchens. Yeah. And in that case, uh, we went ahead in an email vote that we were going to hire such and such a plumber uh, to take care of this. But in my view, the president had the authority to make that decision in an emergency like that. You mm -hmm. know, it wasn't. Uh, you have to do something. That's a true emergency. But a lot of boards. Uh, they kind of extend what is an emergency or not, and so it's highly recommended against email votes. You should take action in a meeting. So we're going to have a meeting. Do I have to tell anybody about it? Oh, yeah. Good? You have to send out notices 72 hours in advance and post the notice at the project. And what does that notice include? The notice has to have basically an agenda, you know, telling people the date and time, the place of the meeting, and what's going to be discussed at the meeting, and when, you know, the items. Yeah, it's interesting because originally in the, under the old law until last year, it was the daytime and place of meeting. Now it has to have the expected agenda mm -hmm. on the notice as well. Mm -hmm. And so this is what we think is going to be on the agenda. Mm -hmm. Now, does that prevent them at the meeting from adding or deleting things from the agenda? No. I mean, you know, things happen, you know, you, you got to like just, you know, in real life business, yeah. Yeah, you know, the board meeting is a business meeting, and this is what we expect to discuss, but they're not limited to that. It's not like a public uh, hearing. It's a, it's a board, business meeting of the board, and they, this is what we expect to discuss. So right. owners have some idea if they have a topic they're interested in, but they're not limited to changing the agenda and adding or deleting items depending on their business needs of the night. But again, you know, there is a good faith, uh, you know, guideline there. When I just started my practice, I remember we were working on a litigation case where certain board directors intentionally, you know, added on some agenda items near the very end of the meeting without, you know, any advance notice to the owners, and they try to just uh, do their business their own way. That's not appropriate, and it's subject to, you know, contest by other owners. So I would caution against doing that often, so. True. So, speaking of the owner, can I can I speak at the meeting? Can I participate? Uh, yes and no in a way because uh, the, the board meeting, the whole purpose is actually for the board to conduct their business. Uh, if an owner wants to be, you know, let's see, they definitely cannot make a motion and try to do something like that. But I would say there would be opportunities if the board is seeking input from an owner or there's an owner's forum, then that's your opportunity to really talk and communicate. Yeah, because the statute last year was changed also requiring boards to adopt owner meeting participation rules. Mm -hmm. I've always recommended they put that at the bottom of the notice. Right. And basically the law says that on any agenda item, the board should be, and excuse me, the owner should be allowed a reasonable time to make an input. Mm -hmm. So we suggest to boards, that, should we paint the building blue or pink in my example? Okay, the first the board will discuss it. I like blue, I like pink, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Okay, before we vote on that, though, any owners have any input? I like blue, I like pink, and I like blue because, and, and then, okay, thank you, we're going to vote now. 
It's not meant as a debate between the board and the owner and a shouting match and disrespectful. But the law is pretty clear that owners have a right to participate in the meeting yeah. on items on the agenda for a limited time, and the board has a right to limit the time. Because uh, most boards will are small and they work well together and, and, they, and, they, and they're not really into you only get two minutes. Most people all get along and they have a discussion. But they do have the right to limit the uh, participation uh, if it gets out of hand and uh, so the business can get done for the need. Right? Yes. But you know, the other thing I've heard of, and have you heard of the expression Committee of the Whole? Mm-hmm. Yeah, com Committee of the Whole is under Robert's Rules where the board might meet as a board to have a, quote, work session, but they can't take any votes there. And owners don't go. It's just a private meeting of the board called a Committee of the Whole. It's defined under Robert's Rules where boards can sit down and talk about an issue in greater detail. And then when it's ready for the regular agenda, the regular board meeting, it's brought up at the regular board meeting and then they will have a discussion and vote at that time. Yeah. So I think our viewers ought to know that there is something called Committee of the Whole that boards can do and they do occasionally meet. I'm on a condo board right now and they have construction issues and uh, on some repairs and we occasionally meet in the Committee of the Whole with the architect or engineer and a lengthy session because it would really extend the board meeting so long that it wouldn't be productive and the kind of things being talked about are mm -hmm. more specifications and why did you pick this product and yeah. and that's done as a Committee of the Whole and it's certainly lawful. So how about voting in board meetings? Board directors cannot vote by proxy, but uh, you know they can participate. Let's say by phone, if you know the the documents, the project documents does not prohibit that. Is it important that the board members' individual votes be recorded in the minutes? Yes. Uh, sometimes, if there is uh, dissenting opinions, uh, you know that's also very important to notify that in the uh, meeting minutes. And if there's conflict, interest, uh, abstaining from voting, those are should all be reflected in the meeting minutes. So, in theory, and, and I, I didn't warn you of this potential question. I never know what I'm going to say. <laughs> so, you go to a board meeting, and there's a motion to do something, and. Some people think it's a breach of their fiduciary duty. Mm -hmm. And so the vote is four in favor and one against. Mm -hmm. So if there's a lawsuit against the board mm -hmm. and maybe the directors individually, I would assume the one who said, no, I don't want to do that yeah. would be protected. I think so, and that's the purpose where you should have a accurate meeting minutes reflecting you know, the, the different opinions and the basis for that. So, special board meeting, what's the difference? A special board meeting, um, you know, similarly, is, it's called for a special purpose, and you also have to follow the notice requirements and talk up, you know, like to do the business that's notified in the agenda. So it's kind of like a special meeting of owners, except it's the board. Yes. And you're again limited to the item for the call of the, of the, uh, of the meeting. The only difference would be at a, special members meeting you can remove the board and a special board meeting other than the official notice there's nothing you can do we're going to talk about the settlement of the lawsuit that's what we're going to talk about and i've seen often special meetings called where uh, it's published the notice is there and the agenda says our only agenda item is to go to executive session to discuss the current lawsuit on such and such mm -hmm. and they do it that way because the statute requires that uh, executive sessions be called from a regular meeting or special meeting mm -hmm. and the notice be what it's going to be talked about. Mm -hmm. But they don't want owners all running down there thinking they're going to do other business when they're limited because it's a special meeting. So they put in a notice, the only thing we're going to do is go to executive session to discuss the ongoing lawsuit with mm -hmm. the contractor or whatever it may be. Yeah. So going into that, what is an executive session? Executive session usually if the association has some sensitive matters, let's say personnel or you know, like a, any lawsuit or in the process of negotiating a certain contract or any topic that's like attorney client privilege or you know, let's see collection, you have an owner dispute you want to, you know, resolve between the owners, those are the kind of things you want to go into a private session, um, you know, and then talk about it and then, you know, that's not part of the regular meeting. It's not reflected in the meeting minutes either. 
Yeah, the, the thing I've seen often beside the mm -hmm. personnel and legal things where they have a dispute with a specific owner on something mm -hmm. and they want to deal with it so the owners can speak freely and the board can speak freely to try to resolve it mm -hmm. um, as it's only involving the board and that owner. So I often see the owners are invited to that portion of an executive session related to their dispute. It may be to negotiate a payment plan under delinquency. It may be they have a dog violation problem or, or something they want to talk to the board about and try to resolve it. Mm -hmm. We often see that in an executive session yeah. because it's somewhat a private matter, certainly an association matter, but to have that free discussion. But as required, when they come out of executive session, if they've decided to do something finitely, mm -hmm. not just, it's not, they, they'll never do something that'll put the association at risk, but if they've decided we've approved a, fine, uh, in general, so we've approved a payment plan for a delinquent owner, they would just make a general statement at what, what they did at the executive session. Yes, correct. And before you go to that, you also need to reflect in the meeting minutes, uh, you know, what's the general nature of the thing you're going to talk about at the executive session. We're down to our last minute, so in 30 seconds or less, define a written consent. Yes, uh, so that's a vehicle used for uh, getting ownership approval. Uh, if you are unable to get it through a vote uh, at an annual meeting or association special meeting, then you should consider using written consents. You know, it's very effective for a lot of stuff and decision making in the association business, like a loan approval, like amending certain you know project documents or passing a certain you know uh, you know uh, resolution policies affecting ownership uh, interests. Then uh, you should you should consider using that. It's only good for a year. The you know the consent you get back. If you couldn't get enough, you know percentage, you got to restart the whole process. Well, we're out of time. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you again for being here. It's always fun to talk with you about these issues. I feel like we never have enough time because these issues are somewhat complex. We hope you as our viewers learn a little bit to spark your attention and spark your interest. We would always say on technical issues, you should confer with your attorney to make sure because every issue is kind of a little bit different. We want to thank you for watching Condo Insider. We'll see you again next week and aloha.